Hey, welcome back to a new episode of Best EV. Critics say that EVs move the pollution from the tailpipe to the power station where the electricity is generated. And that flawed logic can be tempting to believe, you know, if you're the kind of person who likes an internet conspiracy theory. Or critics compare a high-end luxury electric vehicle with the biggest battery possible uh, to a small three-cylinder city car weighing a third as much and saying, well, which one uses more energy? Well. Let's try and find out the truth. Stick around. If you haven't already, hit subscribe and hit the like button so you never miss a show. First up, there's no such thing as a zero emission vehicle. Everything around us has a cost to make in terms of emissions and EVs are no exception. So when we talk about zero emission vehicles, we're talking about at the tailpipe. But that is an important distinction because so much of the good work that EVs do is in terms of reducing the air quality around us. Now, when I commuted in London on my bicycle, I spent years getting a lung full of diesel from an old red bus or an old black cab to get into the debate about whether we should move vehicles to EV, that's not even a debate that I want to have. Yes, we should, we need to do it now, but it doesn't mean that EVs are perfect and we can do better. We're going to need a way to define clean or, or dirty. So I suggest for this video that we agree that carbon footprint is a metric we can settle on. And yes, that is also a made up phrase that came from the origins of the fossil fuel industry wanting to make us all feel guilty about the carbon we put out there, but let's go with it for now. Numerous studies over the years, from government agencies to universities and environmental groups all agree EVs are better for the planet over the lifetime of the vehicle. There's variation in the total number of miles each vehicle has to drive in order to pay back, if you like, the carbon footprint, which is more intensive than a combustion version, but there's always agreement that EVs are always cleaner, and let's get into why. Making and shipping an electric car has carbon spent on it, from how the factory is powered to how various components come together, and the biggest cost of any EV is always the battery. The primary component of an electric vehicle is the battery which uses a combination of raw materials like nickel, cobalt, lithium, and many more, and mining those materials has to have a consideration around it in the environmental and ethical practices, but that's for a different video. We do know, though, that mining these materials requires heating them to very high temperatures, and that takes energy. One study by MIT put the emissions of creating an 80 kilowatt hour battery, something you'd find in a long range Tesla Model 3, at between 2.5 and 16 metric tons of CO2, depending on where in the world it was made. The sources they used were a 2019 study by the Swedish Environmental Research Institute, a 2019 study by the European Federation for Transport and Environment, and a 2018 study by the International Council on Clean Transportation. And another study by the Alternative Fuel Center at the US Department of Energy puts the production of the EV battery at 40% more emissions than the production of an engine when they both roll off the production line. But that's before any fuel is burned. So let's get into the next topic, how a vehicle is powered. Part of the issue with EVs for now is the global supply chain. That might be good from a global perspective, but the current immaturity of the EV market means that many materials have to be shipped around the world because they're not available locally. That's changing, and it's changing quickly, with recent initiatives by America to throw subsidies at creating a more local industry. And one of the reasons why some people feel there's a debate to be had around the issue of EVs and the carbon footprint is because it's actually difficult to calculate. Whilst the creation of a lithium-ion battery pack is more carbon intensive than an engine, electric vehicles have far fewer parts to assemble from around the world. They don't require dirty oil changes over their lifetime, or catalytic converters, which also contain precious metals. The no-brainer part of reducing an EV's carbon footprint comes the minute you want to drive it. Whilst I might have, I think, 17 solar panels on our roof these days, and yes, I bought Chinese ones, so they were made there and they were shipped halfway around the world, for six months of the year in good old cloudy Britain, I can charge my EV 
for free via the sunshine. I also have a green electricity tariff and yeah, there's no way of guaranteeing the electrons coming up the cable in my street are any different to the ones my neighbor gets. But I know that my supplier buys green energy. Most people charge their EVs from the grid and over the past 15, 20 years, many of the world's power grids have added renewables. And this is the essence of why you must think more deeply about how we power our transport. Because every power grid around the world is different. Let's go back to the MIT study I mentioned and talk about the US power grid in 2019. If you pick a vehicle in the midsize segment like a Toyota Camry and calculate that if you only charged the electric equivalent on mains power, the EV would create 3,900 pounds of CO2 per year compared to 11 and a half thousand pounds to run a mid-sized car on gasoline. But transport that same EV to Norway where hydropower is the majority of the grid by far and that EV becomes 61% less emitting. Countries like Poland, states like West Virginia, they use lots of coal and it swings the numbers in another direction. The latest data available puts the average US carbon emissions to generate a kilowatt hour of electricity at 1.363 pounds of CO2. But even that varies wildly from state to state. If we pick data from the EU's Department of Energy, they say the average electric car generates two tons of CO2 over the course of an average distance travels. That's 11,500 miles, a third of the CO2 generated by a gasoline car at 5.7 tons. And let's take another study by the Argonne National Laboratory looking at equivalent vehicles that you drive over 300 miles of range. It puts the lifetime greenhouse gas emissions of an EV at one third of a gasoline equivalent car. And whilst internal combustion engines have been made more efficient in recent years, many people forget that refining oil is the source of a huge amount of emissions because of the energy that refining requires. And of course, if you generate your own electricity from solar or wind, or take a look at the latest data in your country about how the grid is decarbonizing, you'll quickly see how EVs are increasingly green to run. The US EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, have a handy calculator based on your vehicle and zip code so you can see your own personal situation. And of course, the reason why this issue can be messy is because everyone drives a different amount of miles per year and lives in a different place. There's no single calculation, no magic wand we can wave. And another interesting advantage of EVs is electric motors, far more efficient than gasoline engines, which spend most of their time using the carbon footprint of a fossil fuel to generate lots of heat, lots of noise, and a bit of movement. Whereas electric motors, well over 90% efficient in terms of converting stored energy to kinetic energy. Other issues we need to think about if we are sitting down to work out how you can travel with the lowest possible carbon footprint is whether you even need a vehicle. Buying that new electric vehicle will bring that amount of carbon into the world. So would it be better to keep an old, inefficient combustion car on the road? Remember that combustion vehicles become less efficient as they age and require lots of work to keep them on the road. An EV, it might not be maintenance free, but all of the carbon emissions are tied up in the production of that vehicle, not the running of it. So that's our video for today. There's loads of work to do to lower the carbon footprint of electric vehicle batteries, no doubt about it, to decarbonize the world's power grids and to ask the question, could that journey be done on a bike, on foot, on public transport? But that is a whole different video. Thank you so much for watching today. Now, I'd love to hear from you in the comments about the issues we raised. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.